Hello, my name is Lucas Perez, Education Coordinator from the San Diego Museum of Art, and today I'm going to teach you how to mix white paint from oyster shell pigment called gofun. This pigment has been used for centuries in traditional Japanese Nihonga painting, and it's famous for the soft, warm white color it produces. The pigment is derived from oyster shells which are left on beaches near the city of Kyoto for five to ten years to get bleached by the sun and flake apart. These aged flakes then undergo a series of pulverizations to turn them into an extremely fine powder. To mix the powder into paint, you have to use a water-based medium. In my case, I'm using traditional rabbit hide glue. But before we get into the demonstration, let's look at an artwork in the museum's collection that makes use of this very special material. This dynamic painting of an eagle peering down on a pair of unsuspecting rabbits from a pine tree is by an unknown artist and was completed in circa 1800. Nihonga paintings on paper like this one were usually primed with a base layer of white gofun, similar to priming a canvas with gesso before you apply paint layers. The artist in this case also used gofun paint to render the downy white feathers on the eagle and the fluffy white fur on the two rabbits hiding beneath the suisuki grass. When gofun paint dries, it becomes semi-translucent, which means you can apply several layers that add opacity, brightness, and depth to a painting. Do you see the soft edges of the feathers around the eagle's legs, which gradually increase in brightness and opacity? Let's go to the studio now where I'll teach you how to mix gofun from oyster shell pigment and how to paint thin layers to create the effect of fluffy white feathers like we see in this painting. Okay, let's get started on mixing our very own white paint from oyster shell pigment. I use this brand from Kyoto, um, you can see right here, and uh, it's Byaku Mark. Um, you can buy this at the pigment store, which I will put into the description, a link to the store. Um, I'm going to use this sort of brownish colored plate. Um, when you're mixing white paint, it's, it's, it's easier to see on a darker colored plate. So this is just a cool little thing I got in Japan. Um, when you open up the pigment, this is what it looks like. It's actually in chunks, and so we have to break this apart. Um, I'm going to just take a, a couple of little chunks, like, I don't know, about that much. And believe it or not, this mixes a lot more paint than you would think. And there's a couple different ways that you can break apart these chunks. You can, you can use a little porcelain mortar and pestle. Um, that works really well. I don't have one right now, so I'm just going to be using my fingers. And you can see that I'm just breaking it apart and making sure there are no clumps. And you can feel them with your fingers, they kind of easily break apart. This is pretty easy and this is a fast method and you don't have to have a, a special you know, pigment mortar and pestle. So I'm gonna continue breaking this apart with my fingers, like that. And you wanna keep feeling through the pile that you've broken apart to make sure there aren't any smaller clumps. What will happen is the uh, glue that I'm gonna be using, which today again is the rabbit hide glue, that's what it looks like here. Um, if you don't break it completely apart into the very fine powder, um, the glue will absorb into the clumps in a different fashion. It won't get to the middle of the, to the clumps. So you really need to make sure this is well worked over to make sure that it's again, completely fine powder. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Great. And I'm still feeling little tiny clumps. So I wanna make sure I'm gonna work all those out of the pile of powder here. That's looking pretty good. So as I get to the end of this process, I'm gonna kinda of just pile it up in the middle and <clears throat> anyone who's ever made pie crusts or has done a lot of baking, has probably gone through this process before. And that's basically where, you know, you take your flour, which in this case it's conch shell pigment. <laughs> but if you're making pie, it would be flour, right? And I'm gonna pile it into a little, little, uh, little mound like this, and then I'm gonna push a divot in the middle and making sure there's a little bit of it, of the pigment on the bottom, like that. Um, this is a messy process, so just like making pie. And <clears throat> the golden rule again with pigment mixing like many things, including cooking, is that if you add too much of something, it's very difficult to take that out, but it's easy to put in a little bit more if you need it. Um, so I'm gonna go drop by drop and make sure not to put too much. So there's one drop, two, maybe we'll start with two, all right? And then I'm gonna just take 
what were, uh, the pigment and push it into the middle. And I'm gonna start compressing it. And what's going on now is the skin glue, the hide glue from a rabbit is being absorbed into the pigment. This is not a vegan type of pigment, unfortunately. Um, you can use other kinds of binders, um, like for example, an acry acrylic medium. And you notice here that I'm working with both of my fingers and you can see there's a, they're starting to clump up again with the rabbit uh, hide glue. And that's good. And again, anyone who's made pie will probably understand this process very well. You're just trying to mix in all of the different um, parts of the little mound of pigment here with rabbit skin glue. You wanna make sure that it's all absorbed into the different parts. So I'm gonna kind of keep working it, working it. And it should be crumbly at this point. And that's pretty good. And I wanna make sure before I move on to adding more of the rabbit hide glue that I'm, I'm making sure that it's well mixed in at this stage so that the entire mound should kind of clump apart or clump together and then fall apart. But it's a little bit more sticky now. And I'm gonna make sure to wipe off the bottom of the bowl. And again, this is why it's essential to use a, a little brown bowl instead of the white bowls, just so you can see what you're doing. So that looks pretty good. So I've got it back in my mount and I'm gonna just push another little divot in there and then we do the same process. And again, this might seem a little painstaking, but again, um, if you add too much, it's really difficult to work with. It becomes so sticky um, and it'll, become, it'll just get all over your hands. So if you do it slow and steady, that's the better way, okay? Now, if you ever get into a situation where there's too much rabbit skin glue or rabbit hide glue, um, you can add more of the pigment into this and then that'll help um, dry it out a little bit, okay? So it's just a balance between the, the rat, rabbit hide glue and the pigment, okay? And you'll notice that it's getting a little bit more sticky and, and it's clumping together now into like a little ball here and that's good, that's what we wanna do. So at this point, I wanna make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom of the bowl. So it's a matter of kind of mixing it up completely and making sure there's no nothing sticking to the edge. You wanna make sure you get all of that pigment. There we are. Again, just kind of making sure it's worked all together. I'm gonna to scooch it into a little mound once more and we'll do another drop or two of the hide glue. And I'm using hide glue in this circumstance just because that's the sort of traditional way um, that many uh, you know, painters in East Asia, Japan, Korea, and China, for example, painters from those countries will use um, hide glue. And that looks pretty good, okay? We're getting to the point where we get uh, mixing into paint. So we've got this little ball, okay? And there's still little clumps and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is put it in our hands and we're gonna just give it a nice little roll. And you'll notice that it's leaving pigment on my, my hands and that's because the glue is coming out. So that is perfect. We wanna just get it into a little ball. Okay, so here's the fun part. We're gonna take the little ball that we rolled in our hands of pigment and we're gonna hit it against the plate 25 to 50 times. Um, the more you do this, the more the hide glue is gonna disperse into the pigment. Um, sometimes there are small clumps in the pigment that are smaller than you're able to see. And um, it's important to get it well mixed with the hide glue so that it sticks to the page. Oops, it sticks to the page when you're um, going to paint with it. So if you don't add enough glue, um, the pigment will just fall right off the page or smudge off the page. So you wanna make sure that there's a nice balance between the two and you wanna make sure it's again, evenly dispersed. So I'm just kind of throwing it against the plate to give some centrifugal force to this. It's kind of fun, right? And you have to remember Painters would have to know the recipes for all their different pigments. You know, Gofun has its very own recipe, so to speak, that we just went through. But I did an earlier tutorial on gold and that has its own 
very specific kind of, again, like a recipe. It's very much like cooking. And painters would spend, you know, hours and hours and hours mixing their own paints. And this was before tube paint came along. Tube paints came along and, you know, that kind of simplified things, right? So you could spend more time on the actual part of painting. So here we go. Here's our ball of pigment. It's been thrown against the plate maybe about 25 times and the glue is nice and dispersed. I can put this into a cling wrap and store it for a little while for maybe a day or two and then I can use it later or I can use it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up. Um, I want to make sure that I clean up my bowl um, so that there's no dry residue on the bottom. Um, this will mix into your paint and it's not, not hasn't gone through the process of hitting it against the plate. So this is not um, ready to be painted with. So you want to make sure you clean off your plate. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my little area here to make sure that it's nice and ready for painting. Okay, so let's go ahead and now make this into paint. I've already cleaned up a bit. I've cleaned off my dish so there's no residue on the bottom and I've wrapped up a few little clumps of pigment um, in, in uh, clean wrap so that we're ready to make paint out of it. I've, I've got two clumps here, but I'm gonna use one. Um, and that's what's kind of great about this is um, you can kind of like pie dough, right? I said before, you can kind of keep this off to the side and use it later. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of smash this onto the plate. If you kind of make it into a big mold, mound rather, it'll be difficult to mix this into kind of a liquid form. So I'm going to add just a few drops. Again, my golden rule when you're mixing paint is that you don't want to add too much because it's impossible to take out once you've added too much. But... If you've added just a small amount, you can add more if you need it, right? That's the sort of golden rule for paint mixing. And what I'll do is that instead of trying to just tackle the entire mound, I'm just going to work on the sides of it and I'm going to pull off little by little and I'm going to just use my finger to kind of break apart the little clumps and making sure that the water is now dispersed inside of the hide mixture with the pigment. Um, I can continue adding and again, Drop by drop is the golden rule. There we are. And you'll notice that already it's kind of creating this beautiful, warm, white pig, uh, paint. Gofum. You can see here that I'm breaking it all apart, working it around the edges, not trying to kind of tackle the middle. And then at the end, and I'm applying quite a bit of force to this so that um, these clumps break apart and get dispersed with water, okay? If you don't use water or use too little water, it'll become very, very thick paint, like a very thick gouache. And that's okay if you want to use it like that. Um, I'm going to kind of, kind of get, get it to a in between Goldilocks spot where it's enough pigment to make it very bright and white, but also to make sure that it flows off the brush easily. If you don't add enough water, it'll be difficult to get that effect. So this is very, very delicate as in um, sensitive. So I don't want to add too much water. I'm going to just do drop by drop and it helps to have these, these little droppers um, so that you don't add too much water. If you use a shot glass or something like that, it's sort of difficult to control what's going on. So we want to make sure we are adding just the right amount. That looks pretty good. I'm going to just scrape off my finger here because it's all that great pigment that we want to be able to use later. So there you have it is our lovely white Gofun pigment. You can see there are a few little clumps. That's okay. So I was inspired by today's painting, Eagle, Rabbits, Pine, and Suisuki Grass, and I wanted to paint my very own eagle or I think it's an eagle, using Gofun paint, which is perfect for rendering fluffy white feathers. So like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be painting on black. I'm gonna do my eagle. Um, and what the way to kind of achieve a really fluffy white feathery effect, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this, and this is why that dropper is so important. So you don't add too much. So the way that you add, you, you get the, the cool feathery effect um, using Gofun is a two-stage process. So I'm gonna first paint just a very, very thin coat over the general area of my eagle. So you can see here.
top of the top, maybe. For my little eagle. And then maybe just an indication of the wing here. And again, I'm doing this quickly, um, but what you could do to get these brush strokes out of here or to get it look like there's no... So what I may do to get rid of the brush strokes is add multiple layers. Um, the more layers you add, like for example, three layers, then these brush strokes will disappear and they won't be so, so obvious. So there I have my first layer on my eagle and I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's all dry for the most part. I've um, saved my Gofun mixture in cling wrap to make sure that it doesn't dry out. Um, I'm gonna add now my second layer to my little eagle drawing here. Um, it's dried out a little bit, so I wanna make sure that I take my brush and I run through the entire mixture, kind of mixing it back up again. Um, and it's okay if it's a little thicker, if the paint itself is a little thicker this time because we're going to be adding little details to the eagle. Um, so for example, um, the little frizzy tail, I can come in and add these little details like this. So using Gofun, you can create this unbelievably beautiful effect with the two layers. The first layer kind of a thin coat um, to, to give the body of the bird. And then you can come in and add details with your thicker second coat. Um, and it really, really creates this unbelievable effect. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and please look out for the next tutorial from SDMA. Mm -hmm.